insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 84, a Q&A series. Today we're going to be talking about money, family, and education. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my insightful and motivated co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty good well. So how was this week's uh, full day of funky homeschooling. Honestly, it wasn't as bad as last week. We had our first flex day on Wednesday, which was basically like, if you couldn't catch up on all the work, you had extra stuff for any of your classes, you could do it then. That's nice. Did you find that you were falling behind and needed that flex day? No, I actually really didn't need it, but it was definitely good to have, and I knew a lot of other students were very grateful for it. So from now on, at least, as we know of, um, every Wednesday is going to be a flex day. Nice, nice. Well, hopefully that works out better uh, for you and for everyone else. So before we get started, I did want to invite folks to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast application. Uh, if you're looking for the video version, you can get us under Insights into Things. And our audio version of our podcast is available at Insights uh, into Teens. We're available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and so forth. And we would also invite folks to reach out to us, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Uh, hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We're in, on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can get links to all of our media on our website at insights into things.com. So today, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to do another one of our Q&A sessions. We've done those in the past. And the first thing we're going to be talking about is money and professions. Ready to start? Sure. All righty. So the first one's kind of a riddle, we'll say. Which would you rather have? A million dollars today or one cent and have that value doubled every day for 30 days. Oh, wow. Um, I'd actually gotten a similar riddle in math class where it's like you need it's where we were learning about different powers and like you need to multiply by the powers. Um, and this was one of the examples. One cent doubled every day. It doesn't sound as though it would be. Um, very complicated, but on the first day, you get one set. On the second day, you have one times two. Wait, no. One times one. Well, one plus well, one. Well, one plus one, which um, was two. Right. Then two plus two, four the next day. Four plus four, right. 16, and so on. Right. For 30 days. So would you rather have a million dollars right now, or would you rather wait to see what that equates to doubling that in 30 days honestly the math's a little bit difficult although i'm pretty sure it's a pretty large sum of money but it would just be confusing so i think i'll just go with um the the first one okay because if you waited the 30 days you'd wind up with over five million dollars yeah uh, but that doesn't become apparent until you get to, like, day 26 or something like that. Yeah. So, all right, well, we'll give you a million dollars today and be done with it then. I'll, I'll keep the other four and a half million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, the next question we have is, would you rather be a boss 
or an employee if you had the option? An employee. And why is that? Well, I actually thought about this a lot, and I was originally going to go with the boss, but then I realized the boss has a lot more responsibilities, having to take care of any everything, and just... They seem to have all the power, but with the power comes great responsibility. That's a great so, Spider-Man quote. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I really wouldn't want the stress at work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I prefer being to be a, an employee. Being a boss is tough. It has. It certainly has its rewards. Um. And not everyone's cut out to be a boss. It's stressful, that's for sure. And there's a lot more responsibility. Question three. If we lost everything we own today but could keep three things, what would you pick and why? Uh, let's see. Hmm, so three things each or just three things divided by the entire family? Just three things entirely. Well, if we could, I'd want to keep one of the cats. Okay. Um, Just one, huh? Uh, both of them, sure. <laughs> we'll keep both of them. All right, so that's two things down. What's the last thing that you'd want to keep? We'd have to keep some of the money. If we like, have we to were keep able some to... of the money. Yeah, because then you can... We might not be as... Li we might not have as big of a house or as much of the stuff we have now, but we'd at least have enough money for us to survive. So we'll keep two cats and we'll keep some of the million dollars that you just got. Sounds like a plan. I, I could see that. Question four. What is the hardest job in the world, or what do you think is the hardest job in the world, and why? I'd say working in a hospital, being a doctor or a nurse, because on one hand, you've got the pressure of if someone is in dire need of a surgery and you're performing that surgery, you're basically, like, you basically are... You basically determine if the person's going to live or not. Yeah. And I and like when people don't live, having to tell like the family that about the loss of someone very close to them, it's got to hurt and it's got to be hard. And no matter how many times it happens, you're going to it's not going to be something like if you're a garbage person and, like, you get used to the smell, you're not going to get used to telling people that their loved one died. That's a very good point. Very, and very mature view on it. Yeah, and especially now um, with the whole panic going around, they have even more um, pressure on their hands, having to make sure everything's clean and, like, having even more people in the hospital, so. Yeah, you're walking into, you know, a danger zone every day you go to work. Yeah. And yeah it's got to be scary. And I definitely commend any doctor that's able to put up with everything. Absolutely. Question five. Can money buy happiness? Uh, to certain extents. Okay. Like... I definitely think that happiness can come from almost anything, whether it be family, friends, animals, or just possessions in general. Especially for people who are somewhat materialistic, I definitely think that money would make them happier, but it's definitely not for everyone's case, so it's basically just on personal preference. So so money can't buy happiness, but it can't hurt either. Yeah. <laughs> So, staying on the topic of money, if you had enough money that you never had to work, what would you do with your time? Well, I'd probably go into movie making like I am now. I'd probably um, draw since I enjoy doing that. And I might even become an author by writing the stories that I enjoy and um, even possibly make some small movies that um, I can just enjoy or share if people want to see it. Okay, good answer. I like that. So this one is kind of a, I expect you to be sort of biased on this question here. Should children be paid to do household chores? Okay, so. Total disclosure, you are. I know. So should children be paid to do? Well, it depends on multiple factors. One, how how the parent, how like how much money the parents are able, how 
like the status of money for the parents because some parents can't afford to have their children and give give them money for the chores so they probably couldn't and I'm okay with and I'd be okay with that um and okay hang on like <laughs> Sorry, give me a minute. So definitely, um, that comes into play. Also, how well the, um, the child does it. Because if they do, like, a sloppy job, they probably don't deserve to get paid. But it doesn't hurt. Um, same thing, like, money can't buy happiness, but it doesn't hurt. Like, um, think, the thing is, most children, unless they're, like, super perfectionists or enjoy cleaning, or doing any other type of chore. They mostly don't enjoy doing the chores. And I don't really think that... I mean, you could try ways on how to make it enjoyable for them. Like, um, I don't know. Say it's an adventure game thing. And if you're able to do all this, you get a small reward at the end. And that reward doesn't have to be money. The reward can just be like a small toy. And you don't have to give your kids money. But I definitely think that... Um, giving your child a, at least a small reward after they do their chores will set them up to realize that if they work ho- that they need to work hard to get these rewards. Okay, so just to sift through that incredibly long and verbose answer, yes, your answer would be yes, right? Well, I think at least children should be rewarded for their chores. It's so- a yes or no question. Is it yes or is it no? Sure. That's what? fine. Yes, fine. Yes. Yes. Okay. Moving right along. Whew. That was like pulling teeth. Uh. Okay. This question is kind of relevant, but kind of less relevant considering how close we are. But could you save a dollar every day from now until Christmas? Okay. Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> yeah. Um. Question nine in this set. If you received a hundred dollars for your birthday what would you do with the money so are you is there any limitations you have a hundred dollars what do you want to do with it (laughs) um i guess i might just spend it on some sims packs possibly fair enough sims being the video game that you play on the computer yep okay question 10 if you had to start a nonprofit, a charity organization, what cause would you support? <sighs> Let's see. I think I might want to do one for possibly physically or mentally disabled children. I know that their parents have a lot um, that they need to do for them, and some of them might still be in the hospital, others might just get bullied, and I want them to know that there's hope out there, and although there's plenty of good causes to support, I feel like I'd want to support them. Okay. Well, I think that's a noble cause. Thank you. So going back to the concept of never having to worry about money, so you don't doesn't matter how much you get paid at whatever job you do. What job would you want to do under those circumstances? Probably do something related to creativity. Um, I've said like my dream do- job would be something to do with a creative aspect, whether it be being an artist, an author, a movie maker, director, anything like that. Um, I don't exactly know which job I would pick, um, but I definitely want to um, do something with um, creativity that allows me to be, have some creative liberty. Okay. How might being wealthy affect, excuse me, affect a person's ambition? Okay. So it can affect it positively or negatively. Um, so for the positive, um, it gives them more freedom to take on any ambitions that they have. Um, And if they feel really passionately about a certain ambition, then they can go for it and the money helps them. But then again, on the negative side, if they have so much money, they can shoot for ambitions that aren't necessarily positive or just, just in a way trying to be mean spirited. Okay. 
Um, either way, um, I think money can definitely affect a pers a person's ambitions. I'll buy that. If you found twenty dollars just walking down the street, would you try to find who lost it or would you just keep it? Well, so I'd probably go and find who lost it because, like, if you if you find a cent, like a penny on the ground, I'm pretty sure most people aren't really gonna need it, so it's fine to pick that up. But twenty dollars is a lot, and someone could need that for whether it be loans or for food or anything like that. So I definitely try and um, I'll return it to them. Okay, that's the honest answer. How do you define success? Okay, so this might be another long answer. Awesome. Just be prepared. So I think success can is based on personal preference again. Like, success can either be like getting into a good relationship or, well, basically success, like if you have a certain goal in mind and you reach that goal and you feel as though you've succeeded in the goal, that's what success means to you. Whether it be a goal to get into a, to a relationship, have children, get a pet, have a better relationship with someone who you're not normally with, get a good paying job, get a job that you enjoy, get famous at a hobby that you really enjoy, anything like that. Um, it's basically just based on personal preference, and no matter what you define as, um, success, it's just basically reaching a goal that you've wanted to reach for however long. I think that's a great example. What is something that you can't afford now, but want to have in the future? Probably my own place. Not that I'm not, not that I'm not complaining about Get this out. house with you guys. <laughs> it's just, I'm probably not going to stay stay here my entire life like it's a very nice house i'm not gonna lie it's just i'm probably not going to be in here my entire life i'm not gonna be like the kid who never moves out even when they're old enough and don't and doesn't have a job just sits on the couch all day so i'm basically not trying to be a burden to you guys so you are our little burden sweetheart i know okay good answer uh, question 16 in the series, what is something you consider to be a smart purchase you made at any point in your life? <sighs> is it another long one with a sigh like that? No, um, I genuinely don't know. Like, most of the mon most of the time I just spend money on, like, small toys or stuff for games. I really never spend money on anything that I'd consider, like, worthwhile that I needed that I feel desperate about. Something um, you've never made a smart purchase. I mean, I think a lot about my purchases, and I enjoy the toys that I get. It's just that I've never really made... I don't think I've really made a purchase that has, like, blown... Like, that has changed my entire life, so... Okay. Well, in that case, what is one thing you regret spending money on? Oh, probably just, like, small toys that I only played with for, like, um, a month and then I kind of got tired of. Uh, that's probably one of the things that, um, I kind of regret spending. Okay, I can see that. Would you tend to spend less now and save for a bigger purchase later or buy smaller things now when you have money? Well, I don't really spend much money anyway so i'd probably save it for something bigger than i would that would probably do something to change my life so i would actually get like that smart purchase so um, okay yeah that makes sense well that was all we had in our money and profession segment we're going to take a little break and we'll come back and talk about family and friends for over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, 
and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back. We are doing another one of our Q&A series today, talking money, family, and education. And we're going to talk about family and friends now. We've got uh, 20 questions in this set. Uh, question number one. If you could set one rule for the entire family to have to follow, what would it be? Um, it'd be respect each other's boundaries, but spend time with each other when you can. Okay, I like that. That works. Do we do that now? I mean, yeah, you guys expect my, respect my boundaries and I try to respect yours. Um, and I definitely enjoy the time I spend with you guys, so. Awesome. What makes our family... Amazing. Is our family amazing? Because I think it is. Do you think I it think is? I think so, yes. What makes it amazing? Okay, let me just go over the checklist, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first thing is that um, we all respect each other's boundaries, but enjoy time with each other, which is probably why I put the rule down, because um, we just generally follow that rule anyway. Um, so, and I really enjoy the private time I have, but I also enjoy hanging out with you guys when I can. Um, another thing is that you guys are very supportive in everything I do. Even if, um, what I do is not perfect, you guys try to encourage me with constructive criticism to fix anything that I might need help on, and I'm very grateful for that. Okay. Another thing is that you make me laugh, occasionally. Sometimes I get a good joke out, right? <laughs> yeah, you guys make me laugh, and I, once again, I enjoy the time I spend with you guys, so... Okay. And I'm glad I can have a family that I can that makes me laugh. All right. Well, what do you think makes a family close? Um I'd say um dinner conversations. Okay. Now, it doesn't it has it can be about anything, but I think that whenever like everyone's normally separate most of the day, they're at school or work or doing their own thing. And then at lunch or dinner, whenever they're there, um, that's when the family can really get together and talk. And I think that, like, a family that doesn't really talk at dinner, they're not very close. They're not going to get close unless they do something about it. And I think, like, those dinner chats are always something enjoyable, as long as you're not just talking about schoolwork or the weather or any other boring topic that no one would really find interesting and you and I definitely think that dinner time is a time where you can get to know the rest of your family better, how they react to certain situations, and some of their hobbies. Okay, good answer. What is the most important thing that you've learned from your parents? Okay, um, I'd say probably um, respect others who deserve the respect and don't treat others and don't treat others based on their own appearances. Base them off their actions. And um, I definitely try to follow that every single day. I respect everyone who deserves the respect and people who don't deserve the respect. I tend to try at least giving them a little bit of respect, but, you know, I still need to keep um, it low because they don't necessarily deserve it. Um, and I don't judge people based on their appearances, and I judge people based on their actions because um, someone who looks different could merely be the most amazing person and someone who looks completely normal could um end up destroying the entire world <laughs> what is normal anyway right <laughs> yeah okay so we've we've determined what you think makes a family close what do you think makes a happy family good relationships with each other having like good relationships with each other can make it enjoyable to be around your family and having close interactions with each other, like I said before. Like, if you, 
if you don't have those close interactions with your family and you're all just separate and anytime you are together you don't really talk, you're not really going to have that happy-go-lucky family and everyone will just go to someone else who is they're close to instead of residing on their own family. I'll buy that. That makes sense. What do you think is the most important qualities of a good parent? Well, I'd say one is accepting because parents should accept their kids no matter what. No matter their gender, how they choose to act, how they want to act, their hobbies, who they are attracted to, and anything like that. Even if, like, your child's interests don't match your standards, you should still accept them no matter what. Because they're your children, and it's your job to raise them. And if you don't raise them, they're going to have to find someone else. And finding someone else isn't as easy as you think. Okay. Well, all right. Apparently, I'm getting an email, too. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question seven. What do you like best about your brother? I like how he's kind of similar in video games. I like how he's interested in video games because that's something we both can relate to. Although we're completely different people, we still agree that we like playing video games and even spending time with you and playing the video games. So that's one thing that we can at least agree on, although we have completely different perspectives. Cool. I like that. <clears throat> so how many of your ancestors can you name and what do you know about them? Let me, let me just, let me rephrase that question. How many of your ancestors do you remember and what do you know about them? Well, I know Grammy on mom, on mommy's side. Um, she was around for the first seven years of my life and, um, I was really close with her and I enjoyed her company. I remember her. Um, then there was Uncle Mike, um, who is your oldest brother. Correct. Um, and I remember we'd, and I remember he enjoyed spending time with us, and I'd see him a few times. Um, and then, um, my mom, your um mother, um, I remember her, but she, I was only a baby back then, so, yeah. um, yeah. Unfortunately, mommy and I didn't bring a lot to the table as far as family goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> most of my family had passed away, and most of most of her family. Well, she didn't have a, a very big family, immediate family either. So unfortunately, we did not have a lot to to bring to the table as far as living relatives for you. Yeah. Um, but uh, mommy is very good at doing the family tree stuff. So I think we're getting to a point where it might be worthwhile to uh, go back and review all the information she has because she goes back pretty far. Hmm. So question nine, how are you like each of your parents? Give me just one example of a similarity between me and between mommy. Okay. Um, with you, I think I sort of exhibit your behavior towards situations. Well, I'm not sure well, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> well, I'm still working on the problem solving. Um, but I definitely enjoy tech like you do, although, you know, sometimes we both do scream at inanimate objects. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. How about mommy? Um, I'd say that I have, let's see, which of the qualities do I have of mommy? I'd say probably the, either the hardworking side or the tolerance. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> We'll go back to those examples from a few weeks ago. That works. Uh, do you think your friends talk to their family like you talk to your family? Well, none of them do a podcast, so probably not. Not too many people do. Not too many people do a podcast with their children, so um, I wouldn't say they talk to them that much. But I, but visiting the houses when their houses when I could. I'd say that they still had some close relationships with their parents. Um, and I definitely say, and not saying sibling relationships, but parent wise, yes. Okay, fair enough. Which of your friends do you think I would like or do like the most and why? Um, let's see. Um, I think that. Um, 
you like Mariah. I'm assuming that you like Mariah. Um, because she's probably the longest lasting friend that I've had so far. Um, and, um, we enjoy spending time with each other and our personalities kind of mesh. And I think you enjoy her. Okay. I do. I like Mariah. Mariah, we actually had uh, on the show for our friends podcast a while back. So, uh, how would you describe uh, mommy and daddy's parenting style? I'd say that you guys are um, strict when you need to be. Like, you're not overly strict, like giving me specific um, things to do every single day, and you're not criticizing me when I do anything wrong, um, but you're strict when you need to be. Like, if I ever did something wrong, you made sure to be strict on me, um, and... Um, I'd also say you're understand you have a very open um parenting style where you let me talk about anything I need to talk about and if I ever made a mistake, we always talk about it. So firm but fair. Yep. Okay. That's what I shoot for. Where would be an awesome place to go for family vacation? Hmm. Let's see. And don't say Disney. I'm not gonna say Disney. <laughs> I'd really like to go like to go to California. Go back to California again. Yeah, I really wasn't there. I don't remember much um besides, you know, going to Disneyland. And mommy falling. Uh, oh yeah, that was <laughs> that was fun. I don't remember much but going to Disneyland. Oh, that's a terrible and, memory, right? <laughs> yeah, that was like the only time I'd gone to California, but it would be nice to go somewhere other than Disney because you were there in California before, and you saw a bunch of other sites that we never, re- I never really got to see when we went there the one time. So right. I definitely would want to go back there. Okay. I would like to go back as well. In fact, Mommy and I were, were trying to plan a vacation to go back there before the whole plague hit. So once things settle down from that, we'll see what we can do. Uh, question 14 What is one thing you don't know about me that you'd like to know? Uh, let's see. Um, I think I'd want to know more about, um, your joy of writing. I learned recently that you enjoy actually make, you actually make stories, you know, based on more, um, science fiction, futuristic kind of stuff. But I want to know how you got into writing, because I kind of got my writing from you. So it would be kind of cool to see how you got into writing. I actually got into writing back when I was in second or third grade. Hmm? I had a friend of mine. His name was Brad. And we were best friends in grade school. And we both would write stories. And at lunchtime, because we weren't in the same class in second grade at lunchtime we'd sit together and we'd go over each other's stories and read them back and forth to each other and it wasn't a competition because we would write cooperatively so he'd write a chapter and then i'd write a chapter and then he'd write a chapter and it was i thought it was really neat having two people tell a story from different perspectives in the same story Hmm. Um, and at that point in time i just kind of got hooked on storytelling So that was where my origins were. Nice. Uh, Where are we at? We are at question 15. What would you wish we might do differently as parents? What do you mean by that? What do we do that you don't like that you wish we would do different? Um, Or what don't we do that you wish we would do? uh, Let's see. Nothing. We're that perfect. I. I mean. I. I mean. You guys definitely have your flaws in um some Thank types you. of parenting. Thank you very much. Glad um, you noticed. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like you can sometimes annoy me when like um you mess around poking a stick in my cage. Poke, so poke. so less well, stick poking then. No, not really. I actually enjoy it. Not when that I'm you... saying I'll do anything differently, but I'm just you know asking. Actually, no. I. I 
I actually like your flaws, and I think it builds your character. Okay. So, so then you don't want me to change at all? Nope. All right, perfect, because I'm not very big yeah, on change. you're fine just the way you are. Awesome. Question 16. Do you think our family has enough money? Right now, yes. Okay. I think we're fine off with money. Good. That is a question that I had dealt with as a kid myself all the time because did not come from a particularly uh, affluent family. Um, my mom didn't work a full-time job. My dad did, but he was a common laborer, so he didn't make a lot of money. So I would go with my mom grocery shopping, and she would stop. She would load the cart up with everything that she needed and then put the essential stuff up first, and she would periodically ask for subtotals of what, how much everything was so far. And there are times that she would reach a limit where she didn't have any more money to spend. And then it became juggling, okay, here's the absolute essentials, and here's the one or two things that, you know, we as her children would like to have. Um, so my mom was very selective and careful in how she spent the money for groceries. Question 17. Do you ever feel jealous about the family of any of your friends? Not really. I'm glad with what family I have now, and I don't really think I could get much better than this. Okay. Well, all right. Well, that's a vote of confidence there. Yeah, and I'm not saying my friends have bad families. It's just I'm perfectly fine with the family I have now, and I wouldn't really have it any other way. Well, do we treat you fairly? That's question 18. Mm -hmm, definitely. Whenever I do something good, you always make sure to reward me either with a pat on the back or just with a small reward. And when I do make mistakes, you make sure to help me understand the mistake I made and help me um, learn from it. So sp speaking specifically about the house now, not the family, because we already know how I irritate you. What thing about our house irritates you the most? Um... The windows. I'd say the windows because stink bugs get in, <laughs> especially during winter, and trust me, it's annoying. Okay. I I'll, hate those I'll buy bugs. that. I hate those bugs. Well, and that's because we have a couple of window air conditioners that cause that. And the last question for our family and friends segment, question 20. What do you think is the best number of children for a family to have? Okay, depends on a few things. <laughs> of course it does, because nothing's ever simple. Not really, no. So, it can depend on the amount of money the family has, because not a lot of families can afford to have a bunch of children. And it also depends on the ideas of the parents, if they want to go through all that, if they want to adopt children and go through all of that, or if... And it just depends on if they want all those children. So I wouldn't say that there's a perfect amount of children. It's, once again, based on personal preference. All right. Then let me flip the question and say, how many children do you think you would like to have at some point in time? I'd like to have at least one. Um, don't know if I'd get more, but I'd want to have at least one because I want to kind of get some parenting skills and at least raise someone who might not have been raised um, correctly, because I kind of want to adopt a child. Don't necessarily want to go through everything, um, everything else, but I want to adopt a child and ha let them and be the parent that they never really got to have. Okay, I'll buy that. That was all we had for this segment. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about education. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. 
our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back. We are talking uh, Q&A series today, money, family, and education. Uh, we've already talked about money and family. We put those subjects to rest. Now we're going to talk about education. All righty. So in your vast experience of 13 years, what have you learned in life that you feel will be most useful? Um, the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. Okay. Because no one should really judge people based on their appearance, although everyone everyone does it at some point. I knew when I was younger before I learned the phrase. I mean, like people look scary sometimes. And look at me. I always look scary, but I'm really not that scary, right? Yeah, like like I said before, someone could look completely different and as though they like sit in alleyways. But they turn out to be the funniest person you've ever met, and someone could look extremely, extre eh, extremely charming and seem and um seem to be normal. But they could have, but they could have plans to take over the entire world. So okay, yeah, very ambitious individual that is. Yep. <laughs> um. So having spent some time in middle school already, and, and taking your lumps in middle school. What advice would you give to younger kids who are about to go to middle school? I'd say it's not as bad as you think. Um, I definitely had my worries in sixth grade when I was going to, when I was, before I transferred into the middle school, because it sounded really confusing switching for every single class. Um, the specials were confusing and um, lockers and changing for gym sounded very confusing. And it turned out that seventh grade was way better than sixth grade ever was. And, like, it felt as though a weight was lifted off my shoulders. It wasn't as bad as I thought. And I actually thoroughly enjoyed middle school. Okay, I like that answer. That works. So, from a philosophical standpoint, do you think it's better to have one great skill that you're an A-plus at or many skills that you're a C at? Um, I'd say many skills that you're a C at, because if you just have one major skill that you're amazing at, you're probably not going to go for other ones because you already feel accomplished with this one skill, and I think it's important to branch out for other skills. And even if you're not very good at the skills, at least you'll know more. Okay, that makes sense. What are three things you teach that you think would help make school more useful? Um, let's see. I think one thing I would teach to help make it slightly more useful is... Um, let's see. Um, how to handle money, I guess. Okay. Because having to handle money is something that you're going to use for the entire rest of your life. And I think it would be important for students to, like, learn how they can handle money and so that they're not, like, spending, like, the wazoo and anything like that. And they're, like, responsible with, um, spending their money. Okay. Um, another thing I teach, uh, let's see would be I guess somewhat oh, well I want something related to jobs and how to find jobs because one question like every single child has asked is like what would do you want to do when you grow up and many and many change their answers I mean, at this point, I don't even know. Like, yeah. at one point, I wanted to be a magician. At one point, I wanted to be a veterinarian. And, like, I think that schools should teach, like, for specific jobs, the risks and requirements that you need to get. Because 
kids just don't really think of that when they're picking a job. Like, becoming a veterinarian, you take it takes a very long time, and you need to go into multiple schools to be a veterinarian. Anything, like, high class like that, you need lots of training for, and I think, like, the kids should understand that. So, like, a job orientation type thing of, oh, you want to be a doctor? Here's... You know, there's eight additional years of school for this, and there's this certification and stuff like that. Yeah, and okay, and even if the kid doesn't want to have that kind of job anymore, you can still offer some jobs that they might do based on um the in the um activities that they've done and the interests that they seem to have. Okay, I think that answers the question. Of all the things you're learning in school, what do you think will be the most useful as an adult? Um, I'd say for one thing, it might be math, because math is pretty much used in every single aspect of, is used in almost every single job. We actually had an assignment, um, when I was in seventh grade, where you pick ten careers that you can do math in and explain how you use the math. And there are plenty of different jobs that use math. Even the most simple jobs, like being a cashier, you need to use math so that you know how much money to give the people and how to calculate how much an item costs. So, okay, I'll buy that. That makes sense. I think math is very important. Math is hard, but yeah. math is very important. Although there are some stuff that you might not need for every single job, I think it's still important. Okay. What does your school not have right now that you wish that it did? Um. Uh, let's see. I always wish my school had a swimming pool. Oh, my God. For, like, a yeah. swim team or something like I that? I mean, yeah, that actually wouldn't seem too bad. Yeah. Okay, a pool. Okay, a pool. What book do you think every teenager should read? Um. The Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> really? Why not? Um, I'd say the book Wonder that I read, um, that I had read for summer reading when I went to sixth grade. And that's the title, Wonder? I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, that works. It's basically a book of acceptance, so and Beautiful. I think it was a good thing for it. Beautiful. What do you think is the easiest class that you have, and what do you think is the most difficult class you have right now? Um, The easiest class that I have right now is computer skills. It's enjoyable. Like I said, I really enjoy working with tech. Um, and computer skills and just skills in general, since they're both technology based, have been really fun for me. So okay. I enjoyed both of them. And the class I think is the most difficult right now, um, probably math. Like we said before, math, math is, is pretty, yeah, math is hard. <laughs> okay. I like that. What do you think is the most important, important part of school? Um, I'd say the most important part is letting the students express their interests, like, with the different clubs. Because although it is important to know all the educational stuff, it's also important to help students figure out what interests them and um, things that can help and how they can have their interests work later on in the future. So, and expanding on kids' interests is definitely something that I think is important for schools and one of the more important things, although, you know, education is still nice, the extracurricular stuff is also good to have as well. Okay. Which classes do you feel the most motivated in? Um, the most motivated? Probably anything that has to do with having my creative um, aspects tune in. One of them w would be ELA because ELA you get to write, you get like some creative liberty to write and I like and then and I enjoy writing. One of the things with our journal is that you can have some creative prompts that um, I really enjoy writing about, um, and I like the topics that we do, so um, I'd say ELA is probably the one I'm most inspired in right now. Nice. What do you think you should do more of in school? Um, what I think I should do more of. 
Do you think you need to study more? Do you need to do more athletics? Do you need to do more extracurricular activity? What do you think is something that you do but you don't do enough of? Probably extracurricular stuff because I had a problem um, before um, in seventh grade where I didn't join any of the clubs and you kind of need that extracurricular stuff to get into a good college. Um, and although I could join one of those clubs, I was a little too shy and it was still new to me and I didn't want to put any extra stress, although, you know, they're supposed to be enjoyable. Um, so yeah, I think I want to join more extracurricular stuff when I get the chance to. Okay, I think that's a good idea. If you were a teacher, what class would you teach? Art. I'd probably want to teach art because then I can, like... I just enjoy art. I enjoy drawing. Um, and art's probably a big thing that gets my creative juices flowing. So I'd, I'd prefer being an art teacher because I think it'd be fun. Okay. I could certainly see you doing that. So let's, let's uh, look beyond our current school grade and let's talk a little bit about college. Do you want to go to college when you graduate high school? Well, I mean, it'd be nice to go to college, and I'd hope to go to college, but I have no real plans for college at this point. Like, I'm not sure what I'd major in, what extra stuff I'd do. I'm, like, although I do want to go to college, I really have no set plan right now. Okay. And college isn't for everybody. I mean, there's some people who wouldn't do well there who, or, you know, you might not be able to afford college. You might not want to go to college. Uh, There are other career opportunities out there if you don't go to college. So I don't want you to feel pressured to go to college. Mommy and Daddy would love to see you go to college and and go on to a career that you you love and enjoy. Um, But that option is always there. It's not a requirement. If you did go to college, and this is the last question that we have today, if you did go to college, would you want to go away to college or would you want to go to a local college? Okay, that one is a little difficult because, on the one hand, I don't want to have to stay with you guys and seem to be a burden, even though I'm your little burden, which actually now (laughs) doesn't seem too bad of an option. But I also wouldn't want to, like, leave you guys and not really see you guys as much. So, now I think I'd want to go to a local college so that I'd at least be able to stay with you guys. Okay, I think that would be... Uh, quite acceptable. I don't think mommy and daddy are quite ready to kick you out of the house just yet. (laughs) So that's a good thing. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll do closing uh, thoughts and shout outs and uh, finish up the, the business of the podcast. Go for your closing remarks. Okay, so... We talked a lot about money and family and education. I just want to say that it's still important to be educated. And I definitely say that try to limit the amount that you spend and spend wisely. And with your family, try and spend more time with them, um, especially now. Um, if you're living with your family now, I'd want to stay connected with them. Um, spend more time with them. It's and have a better relationship with them if you don't have one already. Okay, I think they are sage words of wisdom. Before we do go, I would encourage you once again to subscribe to us. We're available as insights into things uh, for our video podcasts and insights into teens for our audio podcasts. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. Overcast, Amazon, basically anyone out there that carries podcasts, you can get us. Uh, We would also invite you to subscribe to us on uh, Twitch. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you do get a free Prime, a Twitch Prime subscription each month. Uh, That helps us out tremendously if you uh, subscribe to us. We would also invite you to email to comments at insightsintothings.com. Give us your feedback. You can uh, hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. 
You can get all of our high-res videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. Uh, our audio versions are available at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can get links to all of our social media and all of our podcast episodes and all of our shows on our website at insightsintothings.com. And you... And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. We're going over that way. Okay. Okay.